Hi, my name is Allison Kaplan. I'm Director of Education here at the National First Ladies Library, and I'm here in the Saxton House to tell you a little bit about what kids did for fun in the 19th century. Ida McKinley, who lived in this house with her brother George and sister Mary, and Mary's children who went on to live in this house, had not as many options as kids at home today might have for having fun at home or if they were stuck inside. They didn't have iPads to play with and they didn't have iPads for school. Instead, they had chalkboards, small little chalkboards that they carried with them that they would spell out words and math problems on. And young kids even had one of these. It's called an alphabet board. And I like it as a parent because everything stays in it so you don't lose the letters. But you can move the letters around and spell things out. So you can see that I spelled stay home here. So this is something that a young child would have in the home to play with. And we're here in the family parlor where the kids would have hung out after dinner or after school and they didn't have YouTube. Instead, they had optical illusions like this one. It's called a zoetrope. And you can see inside, there's little pictures of a hummingbird moving around. And what they would do is actually look into these slots as they spun it around. And I don't know if we can catch it on the film, but the hum hummingbird is actually moving around. So we're gonna post an activity so you can make something like this at home and create your own optical illusion. So this is one of the things they would play with. We also have a kaleidoscope. So you've probably played with a kaleidoscope. You can actually make your own kaleidoscope. So that was one of the things they would play with too. Theirs probably had little glass colored pieces that they could look at and move around. So that's something that was actually just invented around their time. They also played with tops. So spinning tops were something that was really popular at the time too. And the last thing, things that you may know, a yo-yo, and you can see None of these things are actually from the 19th century, except my alphabet board. But jacks were also really popular as well. So those are some of the things that kids had to keep them happy and that they would use to have fun around the time of Ida Saxton. I'm here in the Saxton McKinley house and I was thinking that we could do a really fun game today. What would you think of having dinner with President McKinley and First Lady Ida? You think you would like it? Well, before you can sit down at our table, we have to give you a quiz, a manners quiz, to see if you are ready. So we're gonna see how well you would do which of these should you eat with your fingers? Apples, olives, cheese, or peaches? So which of these, if you were in the 19th century, sitting at the McKinley's table, what would you eat with your fingers? The answer is olives. So be sure to add up your points and we'll see how you do. When you send your plate to be refilled, what should you do with your knife and fork? And here we have some really cool silverware that actually um, belong to the McKinley family. And you can see the letters with their names engraved on it. So that's pretty cool. So you would hold them in your hand or put them on a piece of bread. That's what you would do. How should you indicate if you wish to have your tea or coffee cup refilled? To your coffee cup, what would you do? Place your spoon in your saucer. At the end of dinner, a servant presents you with a glass bowl full of water. What should you do? A. Rinse your mouth with the water and spit it back into the bowl. B. 
B, rinse your fingers and wipe them on the napkin. C, dip your napkin into the bowl and use it to wipe your silverware. Or D, drink it. What do you think? Drum roll, the answer is B. So you would rinse your fingers in the bowl and wipe them off on a napkin. And check out these little napkin holders. Aren't they amazing? When you're finished eating as a guest at someone's house, what should you do with that napkin? Throw it on the floor, put it down on your plate. This says in the 19th century, you would leave it beside your plate unfolded. So all of you origami fans that would fold it up into a bird, you should probably hold off. When you are finished eating soup, what should, where should you place your spoon? Next to the bowl, in the bowl, or on your napkin? What do you think? In the bowl. Your host or hostess passes you a plate of food. What should you do with it? Keep it or pass it to the next guest? Answer, keep it. Here's a really cool utensil. Take a look at that one. You see this utensil by your plate at dinner. What should you use it for? Butter, fruit, fish, or meat? Answer, it's actually a fish knife. It's a silver fish knife. How did you do? Do you have what it takes to have dinner with the president and first lady? Or do you need to work on your manners? Share with us any of your good manners tips. Thanks so much.